the Asgard. An ancient and technologically advanced species, the Asgard are one of Earth's most important allies. Residents of a distant galaxy, the Asgard are sometimes convinced to wield their power in the Milky Way in order to protect the innocent. But they faced an equally powerful enemy of their own, and their final fate would leave the Stargate universe and the planet Earth changed forever. Many thousands of years ago, the Asgard were members of an alliance of four advanced races, along with the Nox, the Furlings, and the Ancients. Today the Nox are somewhat isolationist, while the other two have vanished. Only the Asgard remained. Led by a high council, the Asgard are highly rational beings. They resemble Roswell Greys and admit to visiting Earth in the past. Some scientists, such as Loki, have conducted off-the-books experiments on humans. The people of Earth had to prove themselves worthy of interacting with the Asgard face to face before a true alliance could be forged. The first two times that SG-1 encountered Supreme Commander Thor, he was a hologram, programmed to appear to the Sumerians as the hammer-wielding Norse god of ancient myth. Only after Daniel Jackson and Samantha Carter solved a series of puzzles did Thor reveal his true form. After a later encounter with Jack O'Neill, whose mind had become an unwitting vessel of the knowledge of the ancients, the Asgard concluded that humans indeed show great potential. Soon after, it was the Asgard who intervened on Earth's behalf before the combined power of the Goa'uld system lords. Thor helped to negotiate Earth's inclusion in the Protected Planets Treaty. This placed Earth under Asgard protection, prohibiting a direct assault on the planet, at least in theory. But this show of force in our galaxy was largely based on a bluff. The Asgard just didn't have the military resources to commit to a protracted fight against the system lords. By the end of that year, Jack O'Neill and SG-1 learned why. In their home galaxy, the Asgard were under siege by a seemingly unstoppable foe. The replicators are technological bugs, a swarm of artificial life forms that consume advanced technology in order to spread. They proved to be the Asgard's Achilles heel. Eventually, the replicators took over their homeworld and evolved to a nanite-based humanoid form. All hope seemed to be lost. But with help from SG-1's out-of-the-box thinking, the Asgard won some small victories, temporarily trapping the replicators inside a time dilation field. It was another more basic problem that would finally prove to be the Asgard's undoing. Over millennia, the species had come to rely upon cloning in order to reproduce. No new Asgard have been born for generations. Instead, new bodies are cloned as blank slates, and the conscious minds of their people transplanted from a dying body. But the cloning process was never perfected. The result was that Asgard's society suffered from diminishing returns. Unable to solve the problem, and unwilling to allow their technology to fall into the wrong hands, the Asgard entered into an unprecedented compact to commit mass suicide. Gathering together on the planet Orilla, they would share their advancements with Earth, and then end it all. So far as Stargate Command knew, all that survived of the Asgard was now on board the USS Odyssey, energy shields and transporters, weapons technology, and the galaxy's most advanced computer core, preserving the entire history and collected knowledge of the ancient species. Finally, humans were acknowledged as the fifth race, ready to stand on the stage of galactic history. Somehow the universe seemed more empty without the Asgard in it. The last of the four great races was gone, leaving it to Earth and its own young allies to fight against oppression. In the distant Pegasus galaxy, however, an old ember was still glowing. Daniel Jackson and Rodney McKay were kidnapped by a previously unknown force of heavily armored warriors. They discovered that this new power is, in fact, a small colony of Asgard, who broke away some 10,000 years ago. Able to conduct off-book experiments of their own, they made significant progress in overcoming the cloning problem. This was not to be a happy reunion, however, and Dr. Jackson was not eager to celebrate the rebirth of a species. This group of Asgard, thought to call themselves the Veneer, were not allies, but a potential new threat, prepared to take any steps necessary to ensure their own survival, even if it means annihilating peaceful worlds. Visit the Stargate Omnipedia at GateWorld.net to read more about the Asgard. Leave us a comment below, and subscribe now to GateWorld on YouTube for more videos.